Kim here with Brainy Girl. Uh, we've been talking a lot about Facebook Lives this week and specifically the benefits of running Facebook Lives for your business. And so we talked a little bit about that on Monday. So we have been talking a lot about Facebook Live specifically for uh, benefits for your business. And today we are talking about overcoming your fears of Facebook Live. So uh, first of all, I just want to shout out to a couple of my clients, three of them actually, who all went live today. So Christina Renee Joubert is author of When Soulmates Unite, and she's committed to 30 days of Facebook Live. So today was, I think, her second day. And Andrea Carter, who is uh, founder of Wealthy Woman Warrior, went live today for the first time. And Lynn Stevens of Refound Living, who is also a client, is also going live today. So that's pretty exciting to actually see uh, my clients and other people put this into play and see what is, is happening in their business right now. Uh, I, I really, you know, I'm all about implementation. Knowledge is great, but if you don't implement it, it really is useless. So, so let's dive in a little bit here. So I ran a Facebook Live on Monday, specifically about, uh, I think it was the five uh, biggest reasons that you need to be doing Facebook lives for your business. So I just looked at my stats from this week and this week alone, so last seven days, uh, total page views is up to 15% or up 15%. So that means people who are actually coming to my Brainy Girl page and checking it out. Uh, six new likes, nine new page followers, 266% increase in people I've reached this week and specifically with that video and post engagement so how many people are engaging with my posts is up 600 percent so that's one video in one week so if you don't think this is effective for your business you need to think again tracy thank you for letting me know that that um that it's all coming through clearly here so obs i guess is working which is great so today we're going to talk about fears around live streaming. So before I tell you the most common fears that I hear, do me a favor and if you're here with me live or even when the live stream is done, drop a comment below with your biggest fears about going live or doing live streaming video because this is what holds us back from doing it. So while you're doing that, I'm going to share some of the things that I hear over and over and over again. And I just made some notes here so I can kind of stay on track. Um, most common ones I hear, what if no one shows up? What if I'm just talking to myself? Uh, what if I say something stupid that I can't take back because it's live? And the third one I get all the time is, I hate the way I look or I hate the way I sound. So, so let's just tackle three, th those three ones because they are big ones and the ones, the most common ones that I hear. Um, so what if no one shows? What if no one shows up? The, the benefit of Facebook Live is that you know, real-time engagement can happen while you're live, but after you're live is often really where the magic happens. So I had some engagement on my live stream on Monday, but I had far more engagement and way more reach after the live was finished. Finished. So if no one is on with you, that's okay. You just keep going as if there are people on with you. And people will come and go on live streams. So, you know, there's some people here right now, but maybe they get called away and they need to go do something. Then they might come back to the live stream later and finish watching it. Uh, there will be people that, that, that you guys share this video with who are going to come and watch this. Um, and maybe they weren't there at the time that I was live streaming, but that doesn't mean that they still can't engage and I still can't connect with them. So if no one is there with you, it's not the end of the world. If you do these regularly you're, and you're giving good value and um, connecting with your audience, people will start to show up. So the, the goal here is consistency in it. That's really gonna make or break you. One Facebook live stream, you're not gonna fill a webinar, you're not gonna fill a course, you're not gonna secure you know, 10 clients, but you keep doing them and you keep building those relationships. So if no one shows, the show must go on. You just continue on. Uh, how about this one? What if I say something stupid that I can't take back? Well, here's the nice thing about Facebook Live. And that is that when you are done your live stream, you can choose to keep it and have it post to your page or your group, 
or you can delete that video if you want. So first of all, we are way too hard on ourselves and we criticize ourselves, in my opinion, far too much. So when you say, I am going to say something stupid, that's your opinion of what that that sounds like, but that's not necessarily your viewers opinion of it. Let your viewers help you gauge whether they like it, whether they don't, you know, what's working for them in the live stream, what's not. You, you want them to weigh in on that because we are far more critical of ourselves than anyone else is ever going to be. So, so what if you say something stupid? It's not the end of the world. You know, if you're in regular conversation with someone offline, we all kind of say things that we think later, oh God, did I really say that? I had a moment the other day, I said, I actually said to a client, which is not completely unusual for me. I said, she showed me one of her preview videos for courses, for one of her courses. And I said to her, you know, it just doesn't match up. Like you're so bubbly and, and lively when we talk like this, but on video, you're very somber and you look mean is what I said to her. And I went to bed that night and I thought, oh my God, did I just tell her she looked mean on camera? And I did, but that was the truth. And she was asking for constructive criticism. And so that's what I was able to deliver for her. And because of that, she rescripted and redid some of her videos that I think are much going to be much more in line with who she is as a instructor and as a human. So when we talk about saying something that we can't take back, it happens to all of us and it's not the end of the world. It's a very human trait. Um, and the third one that I hear a lot is I hate the way I look or I hate the way I sound. And so really what that points to is self judgment or um, self doubt or fear of judgment from others, neither of which you can control. You can't control how other people view you. Your people that resonate with you will stick around. And the ones that don't resonate with you or your message won't stick around. They'll move on and find someone else to follow. Um, so, you know, what's my best advice here is, is this is a confidence issue. Um, you know, I, I hate the way I look or I hate the way I sound. Well, you might, but your viewers might not. So give yourself the opportunity to connect with them and see what happens. So Tracy says, I appear so awkward. I know practice makes perfect, but it's hard to get motivated. Okay. So thank you, Tracy, for weighing in. Um, I think this is one of those, this is a, this is a takeoff of the, I hate the way I look or I hate the way I sound. It's our own critical voice saying to us, you are awkward. You look awkward. But you know what, Tracy, maybe that's part of the appeal. You don't always have to be polished. You know, you just have to show up and be you and the people, there will be people that resonate with you, you know? So, so even if that was a fact that you actually look awkward, there are lots of awkward people in the world or what you might consider to be awkward. So guess who's going to resonate with those awkward moments? It's other people who feel awkward sometimes, which let's face it, all of us do. We all have those moments of feeling awkward, right? So, so try and take it, you know, see if you can flip, flip the script on that one a little bit. Take the things that you think aren't so fabulous about you and turn them into, to, you know, make, exaggerate them, make them exactly what they are. So if you're a bit awkward, say to your audience, you know what, I'm a bit awkward and that's just who I am, right? Like I find myself apologizing, like I'm really casual today, I've got my hoodie on, sorry about that. But guess what? I work from my home office and if I don't have to be dressed up for a meeting, I don't get up in the morning and dress to go to corporate. I work from my home office, so I wear a hoodie. Um, that That's not going to resonate with everyone, but some other people it's going to resonate with. So we just have to remember that we don't have to connect with everyone. We just need to connect with our people and our people will find us. Our people will follow us. Our people will call us, our people will message us, our people will share our message. Those are your people. So even if you feel awkward, or even if you feel like you hate the way you look or they hate, hate the way that you sound, you actually won't know what your viewer's perception is until you put that out there. So my encouragement, Tracy, is to get in there, awkwardness and all, and the awkwardness might fade away 
while while you get some when you when you do get some practice on camera and it might not it might just be part of who you are and you need to maybe just embrace that as I have awkward moments and maybe you have awkward moments more than other people have awkward moments and that's totally okay right there might be some humor in that but there's definitely going to be people that that resonates with so despite what your fears are uh, so I dropped on my page and I'll drop the link in here too in fact I'll do that right now and that was a link to an interactive activity that I created that is going to help you understand what your true fear is and help you clarify it help you clarify your feelings around that fear and give you a few coping mechanisms to be able to conquer this and get started in it anyways so I'm just going to drop that into the comments here and if you want to go and take it's completely free you don't need to put any information in about yourself it's just an interactive activity to kind of help you get to the bottom of overcoming your fear of live streaming so before we kind of dive into this a little bit more I'm going to ask that you do something for me I'm going to ask that you hit the share button below and share this video out to your network so there are always people in our own Facebook networks that um, that need this this kind of messaging and so if you can send that out to them then give them the opportunity to maybe tackle Facebook live and maybe they wouldn't have tackled it before so if you do that I would really appreciate it Tracy says I have done three in my life the first one was horrible but people like my last two awesome great so the first one of anything I mean think about the first time think about your first kiss awkward right think about the first time you got on a bike you probably crashed Think about the first time you drove a car. Um, think about the first time you put on makeup. Like any of those first times are, are generally not good, right? They're generally not perfect. We can find some humor in it. We can embrace those moments. And then we just continue on. And as you get more comfortable in front of the camera, you'll be more relaxed and your people will be more relaxed too. And if you feel nervous, tell them. I feel nervous right now so I really appreciate you being here with me and sticking through with me here because I'm practicing and I'm making sure that I do this right make your commitment into them tell them don't leave it as an elephant in the room tell them I'm feeling really awkward or um, you know feeling really nervous whatever that is tell them share that with them because that is a human um, they can have a human response to that then right we, we are not robots we are human beings and we are sorry distraction we are human beings and and we you know other people will resonate with the humanness in us so my encouragement to you Tracy is to actually just do it just get out there and do a few more Facebook lives if you have just joined me please drop a comment below and let me know how you found us or or where you're here from um, and I also want to know your biggest fears about doing live streaming on social media okay so let's dive into some of the steps that you can take to overcome some of these fears um, now before I do that I want to remind you, you've got uh, 11 more days to join the boost your business using Facebook live boot camp which is happening it's a challenge starts on November 13th and I will drop the link in here for that as well so with support and guidance and a group of people working through this together you're going to tackle your fears conquer them and start really using Facebook live to benefit you and your business so I just dropped the link in there for you if you're interested check it out Okay, so the first step number one is to identify the fear. So you need to know exactly what you're scared of, right? So I'm scared of looking stupid or I'm scared of no one showing up for the Facebook Live. You gotta you have to identify that. You need to know what it is that you're actually scared of before you can do anything about it. Amanda, hey, thanks. So super happy you're here. Thanks, Amanda. Um, okay, so first step is identifying that fear. You got to know what you're scared of. And the next question you're going to ask yourself is how does that fear make you feel? It's not the fear that's stopping you. It's your wanting to escape from the feeling that comes with the fear. So the fear is no one's going to show up, right? The feeling that goes with that fear might be that you're going to um, feel like a loser. You're going to feel rejected. 
you're going to feel uh, embarrassed, right? You're, you're actually going to feel something because of that fear. And that feeling is what we run from. It's what we avoid. So knowing what that feeling is that you're running from is step number two. Step number three is the question that you need to ask yourself, which is what is my reaction to that feeling? Is it to hide? Is it to run away? Is it to go eat? Is it to go drink wine? What is my reaction to that feeling? So when I feel embarrassed, this is what I do, or here's how I avoid it. Again, we're running from the feeling. We're not running from the fear. Let me just go back to my page for a second here and make sure that I haven't missed anything. Yes, fantastic. Okay. Uh, so first step is identifying the fear. What exactly are you scared of? Step two is how does that fear make you feel? Because that's really the big one here. Step number three is um, what's my reaction to that feeling? So what do I do when I feel that way? Then you can determine what the risk of that fear actually happening is. So on a scale of 1 to 10, what are the odds that no one's going to show up, show up for Facebook Live? Maybe it's a 10, right? Maybe there's a real risk that they're not going to show up and no one's going to join you on that first Facebook Live. And then you can create some strategies to minimize that risk. So if you say it's a high risk that no one's going to show up, then you create some strategies around how can I maybe make sure that there's some people there. Can I send an email to some of the people in my network letting them know that I'm going live? Can I do a pre-schedule of my live event so people know and they can join me then? Um, how else can I get the word out that I'm going live today? And at the very least, can you call a friend, right? Like use your call a friend card and say, I'm going live for the first time today. I am so super nervous. And can you just be on live with me as a viewer so that I'm not there alone? So you minimize the risk of that very scary thing happening. And suddenly it's not quite so scary anymore because you've, you have been empowered by putting some strategies in place to minimize that risk. The other thing I think is really important in this is that you, what I say, choose some qualities, right? Some qualities like joyfulness, patience, courage, um, determination, some qualities that you can keep at the top of your mind. Put them on some sticky notes up on your wall or whatever it takes so that when you're in that moment of fear, you can remind yourself that you are going to find some joy in this. You might not love it, but you're going to find some joy in it, or you are going to persevere no matter what, right? You're determined that you're going to do this. So again, it might not be super joyful, but you're determined to get through. So you want to choose some qualities that you can hold on to when you are in those moments of fear. And the last thing you want to prepare for when you're, when you're conquering any kind of fear, really, is who can support you in this. So who are you going to ask? to be able to, to, who are you going to reach out to, to support you when you are in those moments of fear? Because you can be really determined to go into it and three minutes before your Facebook Live starts, you go, holy shit, like I am doing this and what am I going to do? What you need to do then is that you need to know who you can call for support. So you need to be able to text someone or call someone quickly and say, I'm freaking out. I just need you to, I just need a minute to calm down and then I can get on and do this, right? That support and having people to lift you up in those moments of doubt and fear is often what gets us through those, those moments of doubt and fear. So let's just run over those steps again. So number one, identify the fear. What are you actually scared of? Number two, what's the feeling that you get from that fear? Third question, what is the reaction to that feeling? Number four, determine the risk factor. So how high is the risk of that actually happening versus what's in your mind that could happen? Uh, create some strategies to minimize the risk of that happening is number five. Number six, choose some qualities that you can grasp onto and hold onto and keep on the top of your mind while you are conquering the fear. And the last uh, step in this process is to find people to be able to support you in your conquering of this fear. So I have dropped the link to the interactive activity that works you through all of this at, at your own pace. 
in the comment section. So I would highly encourage you to do that and even do it a couple of times if you feel the need to, to really get to the bottom of what your fears are about live streaming. Okay, so that is, Tracy, did, was that helpful? I'm hoping that that was helpful and I would really encourage you again to go into that uh, interactive, interactive activity, work through it and once the fear is dissipated, once you pull down the fear and minimize the risk a bit, then it's not so risky. But what happens is we get caught up in our heads. So we watch a pro go live and we think, oh my God, I could never live up to that standard. But it's not, that's not your standard you have to live up to. You don't have to be like them. They might have, that's their A reel, right? That's their highlight reel. They might have been doing Facebook lives three times a week for the last three years. They're gonna be comfortable on camera. They might have a great lighting setup. Um, but that doesn't, that doesn't mean that you have to do all those things and you have to look picture perfect. In fact, I think that the live streams that are the best are the ones that are very human. That the people behind the camera, you know, we cough, we sneeze, our phone goes off. You know, like things happen sometimes. You minimize the risk of those things happening, but those things still happen sometimes. So I won't keep you any longer. Um, if you enjoyed this Facebook Live, I will ask that you share this out with your network. Drop a comment below. Let me know what you thought of it. Let me know other things that you would like to learn about Facebook Live as well. And definitely check out the challenge that's coming up starting November 13th. The link is in the comments below. Thank you so much. Thank you all for being here.